Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. President Trump's speech in Poland last week may have been the single best thing he has said out loud since entering politics, and for one reason. It was a rousing defense of Western civilization. Now, you wouldn't think speeches doing that would be unusual. The only reason you hire leaders in the first place is to defend your civilization, especially ours, which is the foundation of pretty much everything we have, our history, our language, our art, science, law, our entire culture, America itself, is the product of Western civilization. So you'd think the people running the West would want to defend all of that, but no, it was left to Donald Trump to do it. Thank you. We write symphonies. We pursue innovation. We celebrate our ancient heroes, embrace our timeless traditions and customs, and always seek to explore and discover brand new frontiers. The fundamental question of our time is whether the West has the will to survive. Do we have the confidence in our values to defend them at any cost? Now, admittedly, President Trump is a polarizing figure, but the words you just heard him speak shouldn't be controversial. The West is indisputably the freest, the cleanest, the fairest civilization in history. That's why so many immigrants want to move here. It's definitely under attack. That's what ISIS and the Berkeley riots are about. And of course, it will fall if we don't guard it. Everything undefended eventually does. Even Trump haters ought to be able to admit all of that because it's true, but they can't admit it. Instead, they're calling the speech bigoted, the line about symphonies especially bigoted. He, he threw in there, we write symphonies. And that's what that triggered the alarm bells for me. Am I wrong in, in making this parallel between Steve King, President Trump, and, and, and white nationalism? Trump seemed to embody and enshrine that belief that the West should steal itself for a clash of civilizations with other cultures, other mm -hmm. beliefs, which pretty much spelled out, you know, the Muslim world. So this is not a speech he could have given really any place else. I and mean, this is a white um, America, America first kind of speech. So extolling the virtues of symphonies is now racist. Slate.com called it, quote, white nationalist rhetoric. According to The Atlantic, it is racial and religious paranoia. Okay, let's pause for a second, tone it down, and consider the argument the president's critics are making here. Trump actually didn't say a word about race, not one. He talked instead about art, innovation, science, free speech, democracy. Those are not racial categories. They are statements about belief, the beliefs that in fact created this country and have sustained it for centuries since. The question is, has the left actually rejected those beliefs, those values? Can we no longer agree that free speech, for example, is better than censorship, that representative government is superior to dictatorship, that our civil code is preferable to Sharia law? And if we can't agree on those things, what are we all doing in the same country? How can we keep living together? What is the point of all of this? Well, there was a time when the American left grappled with questions like those. Those are the real questions, by the way. That was a time before the progressive movement became governed by a reactionary, almost Oedipal impulse to destroy the institutions that made it possible, purely for the joy of destroying them, for tearing it all down. The left used to have ideas. They believed in culture. Now they think symphonies are a sign of white privilege. What happened? And can the purges be far behind? Maybe Brad Woodhouse will know. He works at Americans United for Change, and he joins us now. So, Brad, why are symphonies a sign of white privilege? <laughs> well, look, I don't believe symphonies uh, are, are the issue here. And look, count me in the category of people that don't think that we should over, uh, you know, overanalyze speeches written for Donald Trump to read. Look, this man is not intellectually curious. We haven't seen any stories out of the White House about him sweating over the details of speeches with a yellow pad. So I'm, I'm, convinced, I'm not convinced that the words that he always speaks, that he even, he even really realizes well, well, what well, he's wait, saying. Wait, wait, wait a but second. That, but that's it. But that's well, it. Wait, well, the predicate should be the president is responsible for what he says. Well, yes, whether I was he writes to that. it or not. And, Correct. And the genius who occupied the office for eight previous years, Mr. Harvard Law Review, never gave a speech like this defending Western civilization. So why is it so offensive when Trump does? Well, I don't think, look, the words like Western civilization yeah. are not in and of themselves uh, words that would raise, would raise alarm bells. I mean, we're proud of Western civilization. We but I think the question here are, is, are we Tucker, really proud of Western hold on, but hold, the question here, Tucker, is you have to contextualize these things. The man that wrote the speech, Stephen Miller, is a protege of Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was a leader of the white nationalist movement. His favorite book 
uh, one that is a grotesque, a grotesque book about well, you migrants. You know what his favorite book is. Well, it's, let's, it's, let's stop it, the migrants again. taking no, over. Let, let's be look, okay, So you're saying because I, the guy I, who writes the speech knows a guy you don't no, like, no, no, the speech I'm, itself is no, I, I'm Let's saying, just deal with the text of the speech, shall we? And well, the speech look, says, look, look, our civilization is superior and we need to defend it. And a lot of people on the left are saying, you're not allowed to say that. And my question is, why can't you say that? What's wrong with saying that? But why can't, why can't Trump more extol the type of remarks that, uh, that George W. Bush made in Poland twice in 2001 and 2003? He didn't want to, to say that Western civilization should keep others out, that Western civilization should retreat. He said Western civilization should be a beacon to the world and it should promote freedom and democracy. He didn't say that. Well, that's that actually Chris, kind of he what didn't Trump say, said. And he I, didn't say, look, Trump didn't say that. And by the way, Tucker, you're a wordsmith. You know that words have meaning, and they're dog whistles in words. Now, so what? Okay, but let's just get back to the text. I agree with I, I, I you on this. If you, words matter. If you, if you I think these the words text. actually, whatever one thinks of Trump or his shortcomings, these words are important. And the words themselves are offensive to many on the left because they're considered nationalistic or chauvinistic, exclusive. They somehow put Western civilization above other civilizations. And my argument would be, if you're a leader of Western civilization, you ought to believe it's superior. The, and the left doesn't. This Why is not? not? Well, first of all, that's not true. But this is, well, not, not, just, true. This is not just about Western civilization. Now, let's take Sebastian Gorka. Sebastian Gorka what? is... No, I'm is, not going to take Sebastian yes, Gorka. A, I want to talk about the idea he, here, he, and you're he, off on some other... No, I'm not. Let's no, get I'm back not. to Sebastian the core. Gorka. Hold on, Tucker. Sebastian, you don't like Sebastian Gorka, Gorka. Okay. talked about this speech before it was given. He said it was a speech that extolled Western civilization, which is fine, and Christian values. But those two terms put together are a dog whistle to white nationalists. That we're, what we're really talking about is Christian, European, okay. and white. But this is... And a Sebastian European, Gorka this is, a, is a country founded on European culture. And it's so appealing that tons of people from Africa and India and Latin America who are not of European ancestry want to come here because they like the ideas. So right, you believe right. this country is racially exclusive and the ideas it's founded upon are racist, but all these people from the third world don't appear to believe well, that. They want to come here because it's a great country because they agree with the values it was founded on. I believe, and my question is, why does the American left not agree with them on that? I believe that... that that everyone should look at Western civilization, Judeo-Christian values, as a beacon to the rest of the world. What Donald so Trump, what is wrong with this What speech? Donald Trump believes, Tucker, is that we should ban Muslims from coming into the country. He believes that Mexican immigrants okay. are racist okay. and murderers. No, he but, believes but, that... But come on. Can we just have an adult conversation a, hold, really quick? Tucker, he hold on, let me a, just ask you... A, a, he I, ran I know a Trump is bad. Okay, fine. But let me just... I want, these are real questions, okay? Yeah, sure. So Europe has had a culture, a distinctive culture, a series of them for like thousands of years. All of a sudden, a ton of people move in who disagree with the tenets of that culture, and they're changing it. So my question, really simple to you, is, is the culture into which they're coming, the Western civilization we're talking about, superior to the culture that these immigrants are bringing, the culture of Sharia law, the culture of theocracy, the culture of the Middle East, is ours better than theirs? Can you say that? It's a really simple question. Well, I, I can't say that. Why? Because I don't believe oh, some you of the things you're saying. I there you go. I, I, don't believe, I don't believe that they are, I don't believe that people are bringing Sharia law into the United States. And they're trying what to about the ones who say some, they are? Some extra, uh, you know, extra uh, but, but it's really simple. Trump, Trump, Trump is making on, a pretty, a pretty you, simple I mean, argument that, hold on, that Bill Clinton would have made, that almost any mainstream figure in the Democratic Party would have made 30 years ago. You come here, you've got to buy into our values. Here's what they are. Freedom of speech, tolerance, I don't have, pluralism. And, and with that, I don't have any problem. Okay, so but what, what, what is what the problem you, well, exactly? No, 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 Tucker, what you want to focus on and what every the conservative ideas, commentator has focused on is the text of the speech and not the context of the people who are advising him, who were writing the speech. But this is the insane. Because like, the ideas, act, I don't even know what white nationalism means, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole with you now, but I want to address the ideas themselves. If you have a country full of 335 million people who don't share common values, why does that country not break apart? This is something the left never thinks about, even as it encourages well, uh, massive immigration into the country, people who don't agree with people who live here. So I'm like, perfectly that's not fine. Good. I'm perfectly fine with an American culture, with patriotism. And so I what don't is that I don't believe what, is, the, what is American I don't culture? believe that the only people who are worthy of being American or being in Western civilization are Christian. But nobody is I arguing that. Well, and Trump Sebastian is not Gorka arguing said that. When he was, that the reason what the hell are you talking about? You're I mean, trying to make this scary. He, You're doing like this other property law center thing with me. I'm going to ask the last question. Yeah. What are these American values that all immigrants ought to share? Well, I believe they, I believe what they, are they? share uh, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, of the practice of religion. I don't it know that be. anyone disagrees with that. Well, you know, when you have, a president, when you have a president who ran on a campaign of banning Muslims 
from coming in the country, that, that raises a lot of questions in my mind but why about his commitment. But, but to, the guy said again to, and again, look, if you don't share our values and you want to impose your religious system on ours, and if you're willing to use violence to do that, we don't want you. Well, of course. Why is that a crazy if, thing if, if to you say? Have, if you have people that are known to practice violence or are known to be involved in terrorism, his, his position in the campaign okay. was to ban all Muslims. And then he goes and gives a white national speech in Poland. So it's, it's not a white national. You know what? It, it's stoking, context, stoking the, the Tucker, fires context. of race hatred with like overstatement like that will not end well at all. It wasn't a white nationalist speech. It was if it wasn't a Western white nationalist civilization it had white, white nationalism. It had white nationalist elements to it. It had. I wish we had, had more time. Issues. We're out of time, unfortunately. We need to move to the common sense portion of the program. <laughs> but thank you, Brad, for joining thank us. You.